In this video we're going to learn how to add an SD card breakout board to our data logger system that we're developing. On the down facing camera right now you see some familiar items on our system. Here's the SH31D humidity chip, our real time clock, and then finally our SD card breakout board. So we're going to read the SH31D humidity chip get the data and then record it on the SD card with the timestamp retrieved from the real-time clock. We also have an LED still on our board that we can flash every time we take a measurement. But let's look at the SD card boards in a little bit more detail. This is the one that we're going to use in this particular example. Again, a very low cost unit purchased on eBay. Takes the micro SD card. It has the ability to work at both 3.3 and 5 volts. Remember the Arduino is a 5 volt system. So you need an SD card reader that can work at 5 volts. There's lots of other ones available you see here with different form factors and some can take the full size SD card. So they vary in price and complexity uh, and sometimes you just have to identify the one that works for your system. Again if you're working at with an Arduino clone that works at 5 volts you have to make sure that it's 5 volt ready. Here's another good example from Adafruit showing here that it's 5 volt ready and can work at both 3.3 and 5 volts. So let's talk about wiring a little bit. The SD card uses a slightly different interface that we haven't used before. It uses SPI, Serial Peripheral Interface. It has several different lines that are required MISO and MOSI this stands for master in slave out or master out slave in two lines there a clock line and CS stands for chip select so four lines are required to interface with the Arduino and then of course we have power which in this case is 5 volts going into VCC and ground. In this example we will not use the 3.3 volt pin. So I've already got it wired up over here. You can see all these pins here moving over here to pins 10, 11, 12, and 13. 10 is chip select 11 is MOSI, 12 is MISO, and 13 is the clock. And then we have power and ground. I just have that board plugged in as you see it there on top of the breadboard. You have to use the micro sized SD card such as this Transcend 2 gigabyte card and it just snaps in to the top here. It's spring loaded so you have to make sure it's seated properly. Sometimes you have to format those cards using an SD formatter and I'll post the link to that in the notes as well. But Adafruit and SparkFun and others talk about how to properly format your SD card to work with the Arduino. So the wiring is fairly straightforward just be careful about getting all your lines in correctly. So now let's look at the program that we're going to use. So over here now you see the program that I've written to demonstrate this example and it has the name SHT31 underscore RTC SD underscore 5. I wanted to start by showing you some of the commentary at the top. 
I put in a description of the program that we're going to read an SHT31 relative humidity and temperature sensor that we got from Adafruit. We're going to sample the data, data at some user defined interval and we're going to log that on an SD card with a timestamp that's coming from a real time clock. We're going to flash the LED each time we go through the sampling loop. The output to the SD card, I'm defining it. I want it to have five variables, a record number, a date time stamp. We talked about that last time. Temperature from the SHT31. Relative humidity, again from the sensor. And then also another temperature from the real-time clock chip. The DS3231 real-time clock, as we talked about last time, also has a thermometer. So we might as well read that again. We're going to call that panel temperature. This is an example of the output that I want to see. A record number, date time stamp, temperature, humidity, and another temperature. Also put the wiring here on the uh, in the program. I always think that's kind of a good idea because a lot of the time you do have your programs and when you get them out much later you can't remember the proper wiring. I think it's just a really good idea to include the wiring in the comments at the top of the code. Here you see the new wiring for the SD card. We do have to have some new libraries for this example. These first four we've already used. but The new ones are SPI and SD. These libraries are included in the Arduino IDE so you do not have to install them. Next we define the relative humidity sensor object and the real-time clock object. Here's where we define how fast we want to take data. In this case every five seconds. Tell it we want the LED pin on pin four and we tell it where the chip select pin is. You can change that if you want to. We're going to use 10. Okay, now those other pins, the MOSI and MISO and uh, clock, those are predefined, so we can't change those. We define some variables. Define our log file. This is something new. We're going to describe the type file and give it this name. This We could name this variable right here any name we want to, uh, but this is the object that we're going to write to when we uh, write data to the SD card, so that's new. Most of this you've seen before. Until we get down here to this section where we say initialize the SD card. First we define pin 10 which is our chip select pin as an output. We could actually, we've given that a name. It would be smarter to actually put the variable name in here. Here we go. Once we define the chip select pin as an output, we execute this statement right here which checks to see if, the, if a card is present. If not, it outputs an error message to the screen. This next section, I'm not going to go through it in detail for the sake of time. This is where we define the file name. This is the file name on the chip, so when you put it into your back into your computer and look at it, this is the name that you're going to find. We give it this root name, SHT31, and then it incrementally advances the file name. So it goes out and sees if there's like for example an SHT3100 if there's one already there or whatever's the largest one that's there it's going to um, increment that. So what that keeps you from doing is every time the system starts or restarts or you press the reset button you're going to get a new file name so it's not going to overwrite your previous results. And we'll talk about this little chunk of code later but um, that's what's going on here and you can change this these five characters to whatever you desire that represents the experiment that you're conducting. 
It also checks to see if it can find the log file after that step. Maybe something goes wrong. If not, it prints an error. And then if everything's okay, it writes a header. That's the first line on the SD card. And when you see this log file print lin, this command right here, this is the command that's writing data to the SD card. In this case, it's writing the header information. Now let's move down into our loop. It's going to look really similar to what we've previously done. We read the time. We check to see if it's five seconds into our interval. We turn the LED on. We advance our record number. This is a command that will just advance the record number by one every pass through. Read the temperature and humidity sensor. Get the panel temperature off of the real time clock. This section right here prints the results to the computer screen or the serial monitor. And then right here, this section writes the data to the SD card. Notice it's just a duplicate of this section, except it says log file here instead of uh, the you know serial print. It says log file print. And we had to write a new utility subroutine called log digits to remember to add those leading zeros to our timestamp. This is the timestamp that we're shooting for in this example, one that's easy to read by Microsoft Excel and others. Now another important command to notice is after it writes the data to the SD card, it actually hasn't put it on the SD card. It could be in the buffer. And so this command right here, log file flush, makes sure the data gets written to the SD card. After that's all done, we turn the LED low to indicate that everything's been finished. So that's our little simple piece of code to start with. And we're going to make this a lot more efficient and more detailed in the future. But basically, this is a data logger program that can log the data every Right now we have it set at five seconds. So let's fire it up and see what it does. So let's go over to the serial monitor, see what we get. Okay, this is looking good. We didn't get any error messages. Remember if the SD card would not have been there, we would have got an error message. So now it's just collecting data every uh, five seconds. We can see 25, 30, 35, 40. I'm gonna blow on the sensor. Humidity to spike just a little bit. Went up to 45. It's dropping back down. If we look over here at our actual down facing camera, we can see that our LED, which happens to be on digital pin 4 this time, is flashing each pass through the measurement loop. Okay, so we think right now it's logging data onto the SD card, but we're not uh, certain. So what we want to do now is pull that SD card out and look at it uh, with Microsoft Excel and, and see if we really got what we expected. So I'm going to pull it out of here. I'm going to insert it in a SD card adapter. And I'm going to put it in my computer. Let's open it up and see what we got. Okay, let's look at the directory here and see what we're seeing. Here's a whole bunch of files with that SHT31 root. That's because I've been working here, perfecting everything. Here's the most recent one, SHT31 underscore 27. Okay. You can see how it incremented the file name every time I restarted it. So I'm going to double click on that. And here's the data in Microsoft Excel. Get this formatted a little better. And it looks like everything's okay. There's our record number, date time, temperature, relative humidity, and panel temperature. Now notice if you look at this time variable, it doesn't look like it's showing the seconds and that's and that's 
because Excel just automatically formatted it in that way. What you can do is go in here and um, go to more number formats, custom. This is very close to what we want, except we want the seconds added. Now we're looking better. Now we can, so the data was actually there, just wasn't showing it. See 2530, 3540, 4550. And there's our temperature and relative humidity. I could plot this by record number or by, so I'm going to click on record number and relative humidity, hit insert, scatter, and there's my data. There's where I blew on the sensor. So we have a data logger and we could actually use this to log data in a greenhouse or some place of interest. So in some of the later lessons we'll learn how to take our prototype like we have here on the down facing camera and actually build it into a workable unit that you can actually use for environmental work. And we'll also continue to add sensors to our system so that by the end we'll have a full-blown working weather station that can be deployed outside and collect research grade information.